Um, can we double in here? Forward of prayer. Our kind and loving Father, we humbly come before you, thanking you so much for Jesus, that has, through his great sacrifice, has given us the privilege of being able to come into your presence. And Father, we thank you so much for yeah, this great sacrifice that you made in giving your beloved son. And Father, when we study the experience of Abraham, we see it was not an easy matter for the father to give up his son. As Abraham struggled to give up Isaac, yet by faith he went forth, we know your struggle was far greater than his. For we are told in the book early writings that it was a struggle even for the eternal king to give up his beloved son. And Father, it just shows the value and the love you have placed upon us Jesus himself said that your love for him has increased because he laid down his life for us. That's how much you love us, that your love has increased for your son because he died to save us. Father, we cannot understand this amazing love, trials and obstacles at time comes, which is heaven's chosen means to prepare us for the eternal world. And Satan at times can cause us to think that these trials come because you have forsaken us, but not so. Not so. Your love for us is extremely great, and Calvary just quiets the mouth of the enemy. Please, Father, help us to see trials not as something which you are seeking to destroy us, but may we see it as a means of purification. And like Abraham, when we go through these things, may we never murmur, but by faith, humbly wait for you, patiently wait for you, for these are the things that actually cause the world to believe our religion is true as when we can patiently endure trials. This is what we are told in Patriarchs and Prophets. So Father, we just come before you with thankfulness for the gift of Jesus, thankfulness for the work of your Spirit, and even the ministry of the angels who are present here today. Please, may you bless us now as we open up your word, as we come to the conclusion of our mini-series on country living. Please, may you bless us, may you open up our hearts and minds, may you impress upon us the urgency to those who have not yet left, to live, and I also pray, Lord, that you'd help us that have left to prepare the ark for a storm is coming relentless in its fury. Please help us, Lord, to get all things ready for the coming crisis. Please bless us now and abide with us, for we ask this humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath. Um, as I said in my prayer, we're going to do uh, our final, we're concluding our final, um, our final study on this mini-series we started on country living. So this is going to be the final one um, for now, yeah, because we started a couple of weeks back, but then we're moving on to, as the Lord directs us, to something else that's also linked to country living, but that we're not studying now. Um, what we're going to do in this session, um, we want to answer questions to country living. Questions to country living. Yeah, this is just going to be answering questions. But through study, we're going to study and answer these questions. Um, there's a quotation we're going to look at which people use to justify why they're still in the cities. I'm going to read a quotation where according to inspiration, it seems to say they must wait for the Sunday law and then move. The quotation does say that, but, I say, but what does she mean when she says that? Because she actually, she mentions it, it's only when we see the Sunday law, then she says, then it will be time to leave. Exact words, she says then. So people say, see the prophet said it now, what did she mean? Then we wanna look at practical steps in this, how to leave the country, how to leave the, um, the city. Then we also want to look at why people leave the country and they go back into the city. I know people who sold their properties and they went back. People have literally sold their properties in the country. I, I, I know person sold it and went back into the city. And I'll show you what inspiration says, why they go back. Then we want to look at um, where 
when you are selecting, where must I select? Where must I select? You'll find out the counsel is very clear. Counsel is very clear. Then somebody who might be single, they say, what do I do? I don't have a family. Or they might not be married, they say, or oh, by themselves, no children, nothing by themselves. How do I get out? I might be a woman by herself. How do I get out? God has an answer for that. God has an answer for all of these things. Some people are asking, should we leave America? We receive the email. After we started the series, I'm planning on leaving America. Where do you think is the best country for me to go? Because now, friends, I, <laughs> let me not answer that now, but I'm saying the crisis comes to every nation. I don't care which nation we're from. So someone had asked, they, and they came me all thing of which country they think they should be the country. I don't care where we are. <laughs> there is no hiding the mark of the beast. It's coming to us, whether we're in America, whether we're in China, whether we're in Russia and South Africa, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Someone says, how do I get out with no money? Well, there's an answer to that. There's an answer to that. But before we begin all that, I want to tell you that that penalty is around the corner. Dead penalty. Dead penalty is coming for us. Now, let me say this. Have you ever heard of a man by the name of Kim Jong-un? Not Chinese. Kim Jong-un is not Chinese. Korea. Now, Kim Jong-un professes that he don't believe in God. But let me tell you something, which even men who say they don't, they don't, they don't believe in God, whether atheists, whether Muslim, whether communists, whether whatever, every one of them are saying climate change is real. Mm. Kim Jong-un just done something the other day. Do you know what Kim Jong-un done? Which, was, which to me was a bell, a warning sign for every seven-day Adventist. Do you know what Kim Jong-un done? Climate change, flooding came into a certain portion of Korea. It flooded the area, some people died. Kim Jong-un looked at the leaders of that portion of his, of his area, of, that, of the part of the nation, and he said, you're to blame for, for climate change. These are just officials, just normal officials, and he publicly, because they never stopped the climate change. How do you stop flooding? The man's just a mayor, you must stop flooding. How, how do you do that? Do you know what that means? A crisis is nearing for us. To me, that was a bell sounding that if he can do that to officials, these are not common people, these are officials inside his nation. I'm coming, look at this. It says, yeah, when was this? Do I put, did I put a date? September the 4th, 2024. It says, Kim Jong-un, the Economic Times, Kim Jong-un executes officials after deadly floods, media says. He, he, he executed them publicly. Again, it says, North Korea allegedly executes 30 government officials for flood failures. Now, I want you to see this interesting. Look at this. It says here, North Korea leader Kim Jong-un is reported to have executed at least 30 officials for their failure to prevent devastating summer floods that kill thousands. Because they never stopped the climate change, he says, I'm killing you all. Now, how, does, how, how do these officials stop climate change? I don't know if you can hear the rumblings of a coming dead sentence for us. There, there's the clip. There's the clip. And back home, he's been cracking down on his officials. Last month, devastating floods killed thousands of people in North Korea. They were caused by record-breaking rainfall and possibly triggered by climate change. But Kim Jong-un is blaming his officials for these floods. In fact, he's held 30 of them responsible for the disaster and he executed all of them. Our next reporter. And 25,000 locals were forced to witness it in person. The regime made it mandatory for the locals to attend. They typically shut down factories, farms and marketplaces for executions. Residents living near the site of the execution who are between the ages of 17 and 60 and can walk are ordered to come for the execution. This is not new for North Korea. Kim Jong-un's father and grandfather also used these tactics when they were in power. Kim is simply extending the scope of the death penalty. 
Now, even climate change can get you executed in the hermit kingdom. What will get you executed? Climate change. Climate change will get you executed. The man, when, when they do an execution, I don't know if you saw that, everyone in that city, you forced to come. If you can walk from the ages of whatever to the age of 60, you compel to come and watch the person die. And they publicly kill you on the street. Businesses shut down, everything shuts down. What is coming for us? Death penalty is coming. Now, I want you to see this. Listen to this. This is from Maranatha 209, paragraph 3. What I'm about to read will soon be a fulfillment. Listen to what she says. She says, I saw our people. Let's pause there. Who was our people? Seven-day Adventists. How many Seven-day Adventists today? 21 million. Now let me say this, context of this quotation after the loud cry. Context of this quotation after the loud cry. So this says, after the loud cry is given, multitudes have walked into the church. Multitudes have walked in, and let me say this, inspiration says, tribe of the tribe are going to leave the remnant church. Tribe of the tribe. And you know what she says in volume 8, why they leave in the remnant? She says they permitted the standards of God to trail in the dust. The stand, that's volume 8. The standard, now when she says that they left the standard of God to trail in the dust, you know what she's meaning? That in their lives they were not living up to the standard of truth they received. It was trailing in the ground and when the crisis hit, she says, company, sorry, not tribe. She says, company of the company leaves the Lord's army. And she says, tribe of the tribe leaves the enemy's army. There's a great change over that takes place. Great change over. Now, the, what I'm reading is the context of the loud cry. Now, I want you to see the context of the loud cry. She says, I saw our people. Now, listen to what she says. In great distress weeping and praying, pleading the sure promises of God. What is the condition of God's people? First sentence, in great distress. Great distress. Friends, if our little issues today cause us to buckle our knees that we can't even pray, we, we become so discouraged that we lay on the bed and we don't want to pray. Small little trials buckle us. How are you going to stand when great distress comes? You're deluding yourself. Small trials cause us to question, God, do you exist? Small trials cause us to question God's love. How are you going to make it then? Friends, don't delude yourself. She says, I saw our people in great distress. Not any distress, great distress. Weeping and praying. Pleading the sure promises of God. Whilst, watch this. So now picture now, picture. How is God's people in distress? What are they doing? She says, weeping and praying. So they're in distress, weeping and praying. Now look what's around them. What's happening around them. She says, while the wicked were all around us, mocking us and threatening to destroy us. So what their own difficult trials, wondering if their sins, if the inspiration says in GC, all they're worried about is they just don't want to make a mistake where God's name is in, God's name is marred, God's character is marred through a mistake. All they want is to have the assurance their sins are forgiven. But she says, this has tormenting them. Are my sins forgiven? Am I accepted with God? Even though these people's sins are blotted out, they receive the seal of the living God. The way they are standing in the sight of the Holy God without a mediator. These are a sinless group of people, but they are mentally distressed. Have my sins been forgiven? But in this distress, what's around them? Persecution. Persecution. What is the wicked doing to them? Mocking them. Mocking them. You know about Peter? I don't know if you know about Peter. But do, let me tell you something about Peter. We are told in inspiration, Peter would have made a great soldier if he was called to fight for Jesus. But he says one thing Peter couldn't do, he couldn't handle the finger of scorn. When it was pointed at him, he cowardly, he denied Jesus. But if he was called to fight, he knew how to pull the sword. He could bravely fight for Jesus, but he couldn't handle mocking. He couldn't handle mocking. Do you know that one of the things Satan's going to actually do? Some people will give up their faith because of mocking. Being mocked, they can't handle that. And continue, she says. Now remember, she says, I want to pause there. Which, who's the first sentence? Which people she's describing? Our, who's, so this is the context. I'm, I'm going to prove to you. Context is after the loud cry. Context is the loud cry is already given. 
The entire world, there's a, not a national Sunday law. The context is not a national Sunday law. The context of this quotation is a universal Sunday law. Meaning that it hasn't just been passed in America, it has passed globally. So she says, our people. So our people here yeah, will be who? The Seven Day Adventist Church. Now, I want you to see context. Let me put context here. Yeah? Context is after the loud cry is given. Context is universal Sunday law. Context is, um, you can say, general close of probation. That's context. Context. I'm going to prove that. Let's keep reading. Now, listen to this. She says, they ridiculed. Now she's telling us what the wicked are going to say to us. It says, they ridiculed our feebleness. They mocked, look at this, they mocked at the smallness of our numbers. Pause. Pause. I hope you got that. I, I, so, so tell me now, when she says our people, that's the SDA church, right? But at this time, when the Universal Sunday Law is given, we're going to prove that. How many seven day Adventists are there in the world compared to the multitudes? You know what that tells me? There's going to be in the church a great shaking. A great shaking. Inspiration says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything that can be shaken. You know what that means? If I have a connection with Jesus, but my connection's weak, when the shaking comes, if there's a, tr the fruit that's connected to a, a tree, but it's, it's weakly connected and a strong wind blows, what happens to that fruit? It falls. If my connection with Jesus is weak, when the shaking comes, what do you think will happen? Be shaken out of this movement. So what I can see that our people is going to end up not a, major, a, a, a large people, it's going to be a small people. Small. Now, she continues, she says, she says, they ridicule our feebleness, they mocked at the smallness of our numbers and taunted us with words calculated to cut deep. They charged us with taking an independent position from all the rest of the world. So the, the small group of people, they have taken a what position? An independent position. Against who? The rest of the world. Friends, when, when the pestilence 19 came, there's only a small group of people that continued worshiping. Do you know that the that Seventh day Adventist Church globally shut down? Yes. Globally it shut down. Globally it shut down. And the elders, not all, the ministers, instead of saying, Church, you know what? Now the government has decreed this decree. Let us now meet in small groups in houses. Let us do that. Since then we can't come to the church because then the, the, the authorities will come and we'll get into unnecessary trouble. Let's break up into small groups and meet in houses. Do you know that plan could have worked? It would have worked? Definitely, God would have blessed that plan. But let me say this, do you know what happened after the pestilence 19? Because of unfaithfulness, the tide dropped. You know why the ministers weren't doing their job during the pestilence 19? And you know what happened? Tide returning dropped. People became unfaithful at home. Yes, because of their unfaithfulness, their laziness, their laxitaziness. Now, even if there's no minister and he's not doing it, the elder should have done it. The head elder or the elders, if the elders weren't doing it, then the members should have done it. But nonetheless, because they refused to do it, tide, tide actually dropped. And some, some conference had to start cutting off ministers, saying we can't pay you in our conference no more. Why unfaithfulness? Unfaithfulness. She continues. She says, they charge us with taking an independent position from the rest of the world. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully. Blue words. They had cut off our resources so that we could not buy or sell and refer to our abject poverty and stricken condition. Now, if, if you've got eyes to see and ears to hear, let me say this. What's your end condition? What's your poverty? So if you're trying to get wealth, let me say this, you are preparing for the mark of the beast. What is the end result of God's people based on what I'm reading? Those are the small people, the small remnants, they pov poverty stricken. Poverty stricken. God's people who are preparing for the seal, I'm, I'm just saying what I'm reading. It says they are poverty stricken. Poverty stricken. Some people don't want to hear about poverty. They want to hear about poverty. Don't talk to me about poverty. 
tell the other people, not me. I'm, I'm not a poverty prison truther. <laughs> oh, friends, oh, friends, and you're preparing to be a so-called present, present truth, mark of the peace receiver. Let's see, come back here. She says, now, what, what, what does she say? The small people, what, what would happen to the small people? They have done what to our resources? So what we can see, inspiration is saying that the small remnant, the small remnant, what's going to happen to them? She says, our resources were cut off. What they could not do, if their resources were cut off, they could not buy and sell. No buy, no sell. But what other thing she mentions, their condition is what? Poverty stricken. Poverty stricken. Now let's come back here. She says, they could not see how we could live without the world. We were dependent upon the world and we must concede to the customs and practices and laws of the world or go out. Can you see what's the condition they're saying? What the wicked are saying to the righteous? They said if you do not concede to the customs and traditions of this world, then you must go out of this world. Now question, what is their method of getting you out of this world? What? To kill you. To kill you. Death. 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 Now, friends, I want you to understand, God's people at this time are going to be in pockets of believers. It's going to be just pockets here, pockets there, inside, wherever, over the, all over the world, just pockets of believers. In every nation, God will have a pocket, a little group. Then she continues, it says, if, now let me say this, friends, let me say this, if she says we are small people, a small people is not a great multitude. A small people is not a great multitude. A small people is a small number. She continues, she says, if we were, were the only people in the world whom the Lord favored the wicked or saying, the appearances were awfully against us. They declared that they had the truth, the wicked are saying. They declared that they had the truth. Now listen to this, that miracles were amongst them. That angels from heaven talked with them and walked with them. That great power and signs and wonders were performed amongst them. Let's pause there. What, what, is, what, what are the wicked saying are with them? Now let me say this, angels are with them, no doubt. Literally angels are physically appearing to them and doing signs and wonders. They seen it with their eyes, they are angels and angels are telling them, based on God has told Sunday is the day of rest. Do you know that's not angels? Those are demons. Paul says in Galatians, come with me to Galatians. Be lest you see an angel and he tells you this, you need to worship on Sunday. Come with me to Galatians. I want you to see what Paul says in Galatians about an angel. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians 1 verse 7 and 8. Galatians 1 verse 7 and 8. It says in Galatians 1 verse, verse 7. It says... Verse 6, actually, let's start in verse 6. Paul says to the Galatians, I marvel that you are soon removed from him, that's Jesus, that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So Paul says, how is it that you move to another gospel? He's saying, he's writing to the church. Verse 7. Then he says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, who would pervert the gospel of Christ. Verse 8. But though we, Paul says, even if I appear to you, even though I appear to you, but though we, me or any apostle appears to you, or an angel from heaven, and we preach another gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Can you see what Paul is saying? Paul is saying, even if I come to you, if you say, oh, all of a sudden Paul appears before you, and Paul says, Paul saying, if I come, we, me or another apostle, or an angel, and we come and we preach something else different from this book, he says, let us be accursed. Let us be accursed. Don't listen to us. Don't listen to us. So you know what that means about the Pope? The Pope must be accursed because he's preaching another gospel, which is not even another gospel. It's a, a satanic gospel. Now let's come back here. She says... They believed that the temporal millennium, which they had been expected, was, was so long had come. Then the, the black word, the dark words, she say, the, they, that says, the whole world, she, it doesn't say America at this time. It says the whole world was converted and in harmony with the Sunday law. 
And again she says, and thus little feeble people stood out in defiance of the laws of the land and the laws of God and claimed to be the only ones right on the earth. Now, friends, it's interesting. Can, can you see what inspiration is saying here? The whole world was converted at this point to the Sunday law, but how many people does God have? He only has a little group of people. A little group of people. Friends, mm. are we going to be, I, I can't answer for you and you can't answer for me. Are you going to be a part of this little group? Are you can't answer for me and I can't answer for you. Are you going to be a part of this little group of people? These, th this little group of people, the insp inspiration tells us, this little group of people, you know, she saw in early writings a vision of a train moving with the speed of lightning, going to perdition. Mm. And she said she saw the old world on board. And she asked the angel, is there none left? First, before she even asked the angel that, she said she saw the, 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 in the, the engineer of the, of the train. She says every passenger reverenced the engineer. Mm. And then she asks the angel, who is the engineer? The angel says, that's Satan. Mm -hmm. And the whole world reverenced him. Mm -hmm. And she asks, is there none left? The angel says, look again by looking in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And when she looked in the opposite direction, she said she saw a small company. She says, they were care worn. Like she says, they, it looks like they came out of great trials. Mm -hmm. Their faces were pale. And she says the sun was just about to rise upon them. And before them was great, they, what they, were, they were at the end of their journey. But she says they were coming out of great trial. Mm -hmm. Friends, let me ask you something. You know, this group of people, she says they were poverty stricken. Mm -hmm. They were poverty stricken. Do you know the Bible teaches and witches... Some people, if this was true, they would not handle it. I'm saying if it was true in their lives. You know what God promises us in a time of trouble? He says, your bread and water shall be sure. Mm -hmm. Do you know that if today we had to only, only had bread and water, some will depart from the country. Mm -hmm. some, yet God says in a time of trouble, he's not giving us a whole buffet of food. Mm -hmm. In a time of trouble, God, now question, can God place a buffet before me? Yeah, and say, pick, choose which, which, which plant-based food you want here. Yes. But Isaiah 33 says, your bread and water shall be sure. God doesn't say, I'm giving you everything you wish for. Mm. Bread and water shall be sure. Mm. Mm. I'm coming to that issue. Now, I want us to see this. I want us to see this. Inspiration says, Maranatha 176, paragraph 5. She says, Satan puts his interpretation upon events. And they, the leading men, think as he would have them that the calamities which fill the land are a result of Sunday breaking. So what will, what will eventually all the thinking men think? That why are these calamities coming? What will all the thinking men think? That the reason why these calamities are coming is because Sunday has been, break, uh, been broken. Sunday will be broken. Now, before I even continue there, before I even continue there, now remember um, what, what the prophet says here. She says that our resources were cut off and we could not do what? Buy and sell. So this is a crisis we're going to have to face. A crisis of living without buying and without selling. This is a crisis we're going to have to face. Now, remember what inspiration says in um, Great Controversy. We've been looking at, we've been quoting this quote from the starting of the series. She says that the fearful judgment pronounced upon the worshippers of the beast and his image should lead all to diligently study the prophecies to learn what is the mark of the beast and what is the other thing and how to avoid it. So what will Satan bring to put pressure on people to receive the mark of the beast? Economic pressure. The economic pressure, now question, I'm saying, is economic pressure used today? Yes, it is used. Think of it. When a nation wants another nation to do what they say, do they bring economic pressure upon that nation? Do they, through sanctions? Yes, economic pressure is used. Now let me ask you this. Should economic, question, who, 
using economic pressure to get people to do what you want them to do. Is that God's method or Satan's method? Satan. Is that Revelation 13? Yes. Question, should we use economic pressure in the church to get people who are doing wrong to do right? Should we use economic pressure? No, friends. That's not God's method of doing things. Using economic pressure to cause people to do the right. Question, even if they do do the right, do you think heaven, heaven accepts that? Why their motives are what? Wrong. Their motives are wrong. So we should not use economic pressure to try and get people to do the right thing. We shouldn't do that. But anyway, our right to buy and sell will be stripped. That's Revelation 13 verse 17. Our right to buy and sell will be stripped. Now, my question is, inspiration says we should learn not only what the mark of the peace is, which is Sunday sacredness, but how to avoid it. So then my question is, what then is the solution to live without buying and selling? Do we, do, where was the first society that lived without buying or selling, if there was? Huh? Eden. Now you're right, that is true, that is true, Eden. But Eden was not the first society, heaven was. Remember, Eden is just a branch of heaven. So the first society that has lived without buying and selling is heaven. Heaven, there's no buy, there's no sell. But it is the richest economy in the universe because their streets is made out of gold, made out of gold. So heaven's economy, no buy, no sell. Eden is the second economy. So then my question is, how did Adam and Eve live without buying and selling? How did, I'm asking because they never buy and they never sell. How did they do it? Amen. So Adam and Eve, how did they originally live without buying and selling? God gave them what? Land. And what did they have on their land? Water, that's true. They had water. That, the Bible says that. You can, uh, we can go there to Genesis. What else besides water they had? The, uh, the Bible says they had trees. Or oh, that's food. If you read Genesis 2, you'll actually see first God gives them land a garden. Then it says that there was trees there. Then it says there was water. So how Adam lived without buying and selling land, water, and trees? Land, water, and trees. This is the basic stuff that they had to live without buying and selling. Land, water, and trees. So if we're going to live without buying and selling, then what do you think we need? Land, water, trees, or vegetation. This is how Adam and Eve done it, and this is the lost generation must do it, exactly as Adam and Eve done it. Now, I want us to come back and look at this. Let's see what the prophet continues to say. She says, Satan puts his interpretation upon events, and they, the leading men, think as he would have them, that the calamities which fill the land are a result of Sunday breaking. Thinking to appease the wrath of God, these influential men make laws enforcing Sunday observance. Now, I want to stop there. So, who in, she, she mentions two peop, groups of people in this quotation. I know you can see it in the first sentence, it's there in the brackets, it's in the quotation in the brackets. Who is, she, who is that leading man? But then when you read, the, um, when you read the, the dark words, she says, uh, it says, thinking to appease the wrath of God, sorry, the red words, she says, these influential men. So it's the leading men, and who else is she mentioning here? So let me ask you something. I'm saying in this world today, what makes a man influential primarily? I'm saying if the, if the world looks at a person and say, huh? Money. Money makes a man. Now, if, if I'm just asking, if the person is poor, do you think that? I'm just saying for the world. A, that's why if Jesus was in the world today, even he would not be so, the world wouldn't record him even as they never record him then. But I'm saying, what makes someone influential as wealth? Can you name some of the wealthy people in this world? Elon Musk, Elon Musk one, Bill Gates. <laughs> Another one that's also, uh, what's this one that owns, uh, what's this thing? Amazon. Oh. Do you know that one? Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Zuckerberg. Yes, I want to zoom in on two specifically. Bezos and Gates. These men are billionaires. Billionaires. I want you to see this. I showed you debts coming for us. Now I'm coming back to that. Coming back to that. It says here, do I have a date here? August 21st, 2024. Jeff Bezos, Casey there. I don't know if you can see him. He got a bald head. 
Jeff Bezos went to the Vatican. It says here, August 25th, 2024. What did he go to the, this, now let me say this, Jeff Bezos is one of the wealthiest men in the world. It says, Pope discusses climate change with Jeff Bezos. What was their discussion about? Climate change. Do you know who's this man? Bill Gates. He, he has a new, a new program that has started on, I don't know if it started, I just saw this clip from his channel. He's starting a new program on Netflix. What is this program all about? He's gonna tell us, let's hear. This is a show about our future. The world is facing a lot of big challenges right now. Climate change. Creating responsible AI. Misinformation. Income inequality. Dealing with infectious diseases. But I believe we can solve them. Carbons almost entirely. Climate change benefits by having lots of young activists. I operate from love of my home and the people. I learn from them just like I do from the scientists coming up with the breakthroughs. I want to stop it there. What is his new program all about? Climate change. Climate change. That's his new program. All about climate change. When he met with the Imam, we showed you he met with the Grand Imam in Indonesia. In Indonesia. The, in, Indonesia has the largest Muslim population in the world. What was their discussion about September 5th, 2024? Pope Francis and Indonesia Grand Imam called for inter-religious action for what? to fight climate change. What is the Pope using to bring in everyone? Muslims, the wealthy, everyone. What is he using to bring them all in? Climate change. This here was the clip where he made it a couple, couple of days back. We played it for you last week. Recemos por el clamor de la tierra. Si tomamos la temperatura del planeta, nos dirá que la Tierra tiene fiebre. Y se encuentra mal, como cualquier enfermo. Pero nosotros escuchamos este dolor, escuchamos el dolor de los millones de víctimas de las catástrofes ambientales. Los que más sufren las consecuencias de estos desastres son los pobres. Los que se ven forzados a... I'm going to stop the club. What is the Pope preaching? The, have you ever seen the Pope preaching the gospel? The man has, you, he, he, he never preaches the gospel. The only thing he preaches is climate change. And not only climate change, how we can all unite as, as one religion. Now, does the Bible prophesy for one world religion? Revelation 13, there's going to be a one world religion. Now, friends, let me tell you, Today, the church has shunned away by identifying the Pope as the Antichrist. Today, when you ask a man in position within the general conference or in high authority, what's the mark of the peace? You won't just get a straight answer. You'll ask them, was the Pope the Antichrist? You won't get a straight answer. You ask them, is it right for there to be an interfaith dialogue? You won't get a right answer. They'll tell you it's possible. I want you to listen to a stone. You know what I mean, a stone? You know, John the Baptist said to the Pharisees and the scribes, he said that, do not think because you have the lineage of Abraham that you're going to the kingdom. He says, God is able of these stones to raise up seed unto Abraham. Now what he was talking about, not a little stone. The Bible almost refers to the unconverted heart as a stony heart. He was saying God is able of the Gentiles, those out there, to make them children of Abraham. So I want you to see something where the stones are crying out. Now I want you to see this clip. Look at this clip here. The Pope is calling for, it's a clip where the Pope is calling for all religions to unite as it done now in Indonesia. As he's doing now in his trip to all these Muslim nations. Listen to this and I want you to listen to the stone. Remember, God has called us and he has given us a message to expose the wickedness of the man of sin. This is our message to expose him. Now, the Pope, does he figure largely in the winding up of this earth's history? Yes. Listen.
dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Allah. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Inspiration says that a Pope is a chameleon. You know what's a chameleon? A chameleon changes colors to everything it's in. Take a chameleon, put it when the green, it turns green. Take a chameleon, put it by a brown, it turns brown. The Pope is a chameleon. You know what that means? Wherever he goes, he, com he, he conforms to that religion. When you ask by the Muslims, he conforms to become partially Muslim. Wherever he goes, he conforms. Now watch this, watch this. There's a stone speaking. Anyone, any church leader, open your ears, your eyes, your heart, your whole being. No matter how big that church leader is in the church, any church leader that comes and says, I speak, I speak to heaven directly. Angels, people from heaven come and talk to me. Anyone, even if they talk to heaven, and then come back and say all religions must get together because we all worship the same God but each one to their own ways is the son of the snake is a liar Jesus Christ cannot will not be shared with no other religious figure Jesus Christ cannot be in communion with any other religious figure because Jesus Christ is the only God revealed in the flesh. All other religious figures are sinners and have rotted in the grave and gone with the wind. Jesus lives forever. His tomb is empty for he is the I am revealed in the flesh. The church of the 21st century has become Christians by name. Unfortunately, and so sadly to the Lord, first and foremost, the church has walked away from the true Messiah. We've become Christians by name. He's diagnosing even a problem within Christianity. He says many who profess Christianity, only Christians by name. That's all. That's how far the religion goes. By name, I'm Seventh-day Adventist. Now, obviously, he needs education, education on the third angel's message. But nonetheless, he has just spoken truth. He has just declared truth. Now, I want you to see, back to the man of sin who figures largely in the winding up of this earth's history. I want you to see what the Pope says about homosexuality. Listen to what he has to say. Somos todos hijos de Dios. We are all children of God, and God loves us as we are. Each of us has our own fight of dignity. Being homosexual is not a crime. It says being homosexual is not a crime. Then he quickly says, it can be a sin, and then he backtracks, and then he says, but you are unloving, you are just, you, you are committing sin. When you're not loving to the homosexual. Yes, he's the man of sin. That's why he's called the man of sin. Sin is the breaking of the law. He's encouraging people to break God's law. Man of sin. This is the man of sin. When he went to Indonesia, you must understand, Indonesia is full of what? What, nation, what, what religion? Huh? Muslims. But let me say this. Why Indonesian Muslims came and they bowed before him? We showed you how they bowed before him. Acknowledging his supremacy. Why? Because inside of Indonesia, something there. It says here, when Pope Francis went to Indonesia, one of the groups of people he met with, it says Pope Francis holds brotherly encounter with Jesuits in Indonesia. So that's why Indonesia is going to bend their knee, and they were bending their knee when they came there. Because the Jesuits have prepared a ground for him. They had prepared a ground. Now, friends, I want to get to our study, but let me say this with the U.S. elections. 
with the US elections, Putin was asked, who are you backing? Because remember a couple of months back, he said he's backing Biden. Biden literally came on camera and saw him. And they asked Putin, hey, you heard Biden saw you, he came back and he said, that's why we're backing him. We vote, we want him to win. <laughs> so now they asked him in an interview as he was sitting there, they said, Biden, who, who are you now backing, Mr. Putin? And I want you to see, it says, the article says, Putin backs Kamala Harris. Now, I want you to look, look at the clip. A surprising endorsement from Russian President Vladimir Putin. He says he supports Kamala Harris for U.S. president. The Russian president has long been considered friendlier with Republican nominee Donald Trump. But has that changed or is Putin playing games? Have a listen to this remarkable comment. As for the favorites, there is no need to define that. It's a choice by the people of America in the end. I've said that our so to say favorite was the acting president, Mr. Biden. He's been taken out of the race, but he advised all his supporters to support Mrs. Harris. That's what we'll do. We'll support her as well. That's the first thing. Secondly, her laugh is so expressive and infectious. That means that she's doing well. Now, I want to pause there. Do you know why he's saying he's back in Kamala Harris and why he said that he was back in Biden? Do you know why? The previous elections, when Trump had won, they said that Russia interfered with the elections and caused Trump to win. So what he's doing now, he's saying publicly, you know what, I'm back in Harris, I'm back in Biden. So that that claim, which was, for, which obviously, when they done the research to check, they saw there was, there was no such thing. But now, Putin, so that there's no accusations against Russia, he's saying that he's back in the opposite side. Mm -hmm. Because Trump said that when he becomes president, he's calling Mr. Putin, He's calling Mr. Zelensky, and this war is over immediately. Because he said he's not going to fund Zelensky one cent to continue this war with Russia. He says that war should have never taken place. Should have never taken place. Now, I'm going to stop with Russia and Ukraine. I want us to look, I want us to answer a few questions. This is the first thing I want to answer. Uh, this, this question I want to answer. Let me say this. Country living is a link to my salvation. Maybe that's the first thing. Remember in Matthew 24, when Jesus spoke about climate change, which we can see it's becoming an issue. What did Jesus say in verse 37? As it was in the days of Noah. So, so, and he says, so shall it be. Now question, when Noah was preparing to meet the crisis of his time, was Noah to prepare only physical, I mean, only spiritually, or was he to prepare uh, uh, physically as well? He had a twofold preparation. Now I want you to see, someone says, if Noah was just right uh, spiritually, he need not have worried physically for preparation. Let's see if the Bible teaches that. Does the Bible teach that if Noah did not prepare the ark, would he, been, would he have been saved? Come with me to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews the 11 chapter. I want us to see this. The, safe, the building of the ark, the physical preparation, that it have anything to do with their salvation. Hebrews chapter 11. I want us to see Hebrews 11 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading verse 7. Hebrews 11 verse 7. It says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his house. Let's stop right there. Based on what I'm just reading, a saving or salvation was it linked to the ark. That's what I'm seeing in the Bible. So question, if Noah did not build the ark, would there be a saving? No. no, there would be no saving. So question, was the ark or the physical preparation essential to his salvation? Yes. Very much essential. So then if Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man, I'm oxing then. Would my physical preparation for the coming crisis be essential to my salvation? Yes. yes. Now I want you to see the quotation that says it very clearly. This is where the prophet says it. This is country living, page nine. She says, in harmony with the light given me, I am urging our people to come out of the great senses of population. Our cities are increasing in wickedness and it is becoming more and more evident that those who remain in them unnecessarily do so at the peril of their soul salvation. Can you hear this question, is it a salvation issue to remain in the cities unnecessarily? 
What does she say? You do so at the peril of your salvation. It is it's linked to my salvation, whether I make the exodus or whether I remain. That's what the prophet is saying. It is a salvational issue. It is a salvational issue. Now, what I want us to do now, that is clear. It is linked to our salvation. What I want us to do now, the first question is this quotation we want to answer. We want to answer this quotation, country living, page 32. Country living, page 32. Listen to what the prophet says. When, I, let, me, let me blank this. Let's, let's blank that. I want to ask you a question. We covered this in our previous country living study. When should we leave the cities? Uh, as remember, she says, if you, especially if you're in the large city, she says, as fast as possible, get out. But I'm saying, in, 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 to prepare for the crisis, I'm saying, when should one go out? When the Sunday law is in force, we leave and prepare. When? Before. Now, you know what? Does anyone have early writings here? You got it there, brother? The book? All right. That got the correct pages there. <laughs> okay. Well, sometimes the pages in the book are not the same pages, but I think you had got the same pages. Now, there's a question that just popped in my, in my mind now. I never think of it in my, in my list of questions, which we can also put this question in because it's linked on timing of leaving. Let me ask a question to you. I'm throwing it out. Put the mic on, Talon. If there's a family that's inside the city and a husband sees present fruit, sees, or a wife, if vice versa, sees that I need to make an ex we as a family need to make exodus, and vice versa, husband or wife says we're not going because they're unconverted to present truth. I'm asking in that situation, what then? That's my, I'm throwing it out. I'll give you, maybe at the conclusion of the study, I'll come and ask you if you've got no answer. Anyone got an answer? All right, there's three. All, all right, let's start with Brother Felix. <laughs> because we know you might not have, and then we'll move back to those who are longer. So let's, let's see what, what, what do you have to say. Um, with that question, Brother Devin, I will remember that Lord also was in this situation. Yes. But she was, he was influenced with his husband, with, his, with her wife. Yes. So with that question, I would rather say, you stay and I'll go. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. I rather <laughs> click to God. She stays right. and I go. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Next, uh, what do you say? The Bible says, if you love mother, father, or whatever more mm. than me, then you're not worthy to be my disciple. Mm. So if you've been given pre light yeah. and your spouse, you can continue praying for them, but mm. you must make the preparations to leave. Mm. So, okay, so, you also, so, so what, what I'm hearing, okay, so I'm hearing that what we are saying is that if, now let me, let me so you're, what I'm getting from you all is that leave if spouse don't want to. Leave if spouse don't want to. Now, I'm saying, let, let's, 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 because I've heard different situations. What that I'm saying, there's children there, and spouse says, you go, I'm keeping my children. <laughs> my children have a future. My children have a, they need to go and study in university. This thing about Jesus is coming and the world's ending, it's a delusion. What? Does, does spouse, husband say, buy children, buy wife, I'm exodusing. Or, or wife says, buy husband, buy children, I'm exodusing. I, I, I'm leaving. You have a, I'm giving last one, last one, yes. Same, same question, same question. We have learned that your dear blood will be on your hands. Mm. You know what's best. Mm. And you have to take your children with you. Okay, but I'm saying, the, 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 just say you leave it and then he says no. You're in the city and he says you go if you want to go, but my children are staying with me. I'm saying in, what, what do you do as spouse or vice versa? Husband says it to wife or wife says it to husband. But now, I'm not making up some, Why I'm bringing this question out is because this is the current situation amongst present truthers. Okay. They converted to the message, husband's not converted. Or husband's converted, wife is not converted. What then? I think we should pray more honestly. You've got to pray more honestly. Trust so me. first step is pray. Pray. All right. You have to pray. And God will 
God knows your situation. Okay, pray. Yes. Good, good, good to start off with prayer. Taz? But can't you also, like, if it's in that situation, won't you try to also minister to your partner? Yeah, let's just say, I'm, I'm, I'm back to the scenario. He, he, she hears it, he hears and it. He and they it. say that this is fanatism, this is extremism. My child's going to university. My child's going to public schools. My child, you do what you want to. But my child, we got a future in this world. If the child is old enough to make a decision. No, no, back again. This is ch we're Maybe small children, yeah. Small children, yeah. Okay, so what I, what I just threw to you all is, you know what, if we would open up, Julia, how many people speaking and telling you that's my situation? I'm now currently in the city and this is my situation. This is a practical thing I'm bringing to you. Very much practical. What do we, what counsel you in the country, what counsel do you give to that person? You tell them pack and leave your, leave your, leave your spouse, leave your children behind. Yes. Pray, but now, okay, they're saying, okay, I'm praying. Any, any light you got for me? Okay, last one. I'm taking last then. Take last then, and then after that, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I think because you know the truth, just say I'm the father and I have two kids, and your partner does not want to go with what God's saying. I will take my children. But remember your partner saying, your partner saying, you go, if, if that's your call. My children, you, we, 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 we were all here in the city. We're not, you, that's where we were found. We're not moving. But, but that's saying that I'm yielding to her, not to God. So I, I don't know if I'm not. I will, I, will, I will take my children. No, let me tell you, there are men today, I'm telling you, I've received, we've received email, even spoke, there are men today that their families don't want country living. Mm -hmm. Wife, children don't want it. Mm -hmm. And we're told, you go, we're not going. Mm -hmm. Do all possible that you can to convince them to stay and pray. Let, let me say this. Let me say this. Wash your hands and <laughs> You're saying Pilate, follow Pilate's example, wash your hands. But Pilate was not innocent of the blood. He, he, when he said, it, his blood be not on me, that blood was on Pilate. It was on Pilate. Now let me say this. Let me throw another, throw it one more thing inside. The wife might be fully convicted to live. No, she sees the signs, understand, but she's housewife and the husband has all the money. Again, what do you tell that person? Because this is practical, I'm telling you what I know. What do you tell that individual now? They start in country living, they see it, they acknowledge it, they accept it. Husband got all the, husband is the one bringing the income. What does she do now? She's in the situation, she wants to go, husband says we're not buying no country property. Or vice versa, because sometimes it's vice versa. What then? What then? Now, let me say this. I can't speak for the, in God, they have to pray. That's the first day pray. That's the first day pray. God gives counsel to each individual situation. He will give counsel. Sometimes God might lead in ways where other partner follow suit. God can lead in different ways, but each person needs to pray directly to God and God will show them what they ought to do. But let me read a quotation which a brother had shared with me. Actually not with me, there was a question asked once in Zoom. And this is a quotation and I never see it in this light. But let me share with you this quotation. I'm reading from early writings. Um, page, this is a mixed, it's a mixed up. So I think it's 271, it could be 272. She says, context is a loud cry. Context is a loud cry. Now listen to what she says. She says, I heard those clothed with the armor, this is it's 272, I heard those clothed with the armor speak forth the truth with great power. So what is happening here? The loud cry has been given with great power. She says, it had its effect. Many who had been bound 
some wives by their husband and some children by their parents. The honest who had been prevented from hearing the truth and eagerly, she says, now come back. What has been proclaimed there? She says when it was proclaimed, she says some were bound to their wives. Some wives were bound to the husband. They wanted to obey the truth, but the husband bound them. Wife wanted, vice versa, bound them. But as the loud cry is given, because they've been previously hearing the voice of Jesus, now they break loose from husband or wife. They break loose. Why husband or wife now? They say we can no longer stay by your side. The, we are hearing the voice of Jesus is calling and they break loose. So when, for some people, will God only take them out of the cities? Just at the 11th hour, the loud cry. Because they're bound to their family and they can't move, God at the 11th hour will take them out. And when he takes them out, there's no need for them to go and plant trees and do all. God will take them straight to a country property. That those who are giving the loud cry already in, they will just come with them to their country property. So here you can see some will only make the exodus at the 11th hour. Some will only make the exodus at the 11th hour. Now, uh, it depends upon the education that child was receiving. Mm -hmm. Who done more education? Was it the wicked parent giving more education? Or was it the... Now, if the parent really has a connection with Jesus, they're going to implant as much truth as possible in their child's heart. So that when the loud cry is given, that child will hear the voice of Jesus and will exit with them. So here you can see, friends, unfortunately not entire families will be saved together. Mm -hmm. You can see sometimes husbands are gonna break loose from wife. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not God's plan for such things, but when the truth is proclaimed and a stand must be made between husband or wife or God, then at that hour, people are gonna make their decision mm -hmm. to follow God rather than loved ones. Mm -hmm. So now we can see, I hope that answers that question. Now, I want to come back now to this quotation. This is the quotation I want us to look at. Let us look at it, you can't speak because you are in the school. So maybe you won't even, I don't know if you even, <laughs> you might not know, but it's fine. Let me read the quotation. Let me read, Country Living, page 32. What are we doing in this session trying to answer questions when people have studied our previous study? What do we do in this situation? Oh, there's another one. I'm, I'm waiting for the Sunday law. I'm waiting for the Sunday law. So can you remember, can you help, before I even read that quotation, can you tell me the faith, the, what, where should we be and when should we be? At what period of Earth's history we should be where and where should we be? So what I'm gonna put here, the Sunday law, I'm gonna put here the general close of probation, and then we put right at the end the second coming. So what I'm gonna, from the national Sunday law to the general close of probation, you call this the little, and then from, the close of probation to the second coming, the great. We've, we've covered this, I'm not covering again. So I'm asking, when, where is country living in this chart? Where is country living? Before the small time of trouble. The God's people should be in the country, yeah. This is where they should be, country living, is before the Sunday law. Now obviously when I'm talking, we are not talking, some situations, this is difficult. As I just gave an illustration, for some, that's difficult. But for majority, it's not the case. So we should be in a country before the National Sunday Law. Now, my question is, from the National Sunday Law to the gender close of probation, we know there's no buy, no sell. You know that, right? Revelation 13, 17, our resources will be cut off. 13 verse 17. So then how does God, God's people live during this time? How do they live during this time? The love of the land. This is where we live of the land. So from the great time of trouble to the second coming, how does God people, God's people love? Because the land is going to be taken. Once the plagues start falling, and the, where God's people are, the plagues don't fall on their land. So when the wicked see that the plagues are destroying everything, but those people, their land has not been touched by a plague. What do you think they're going to do to the land? They're going to take the land by force. So then how will God's people live from the gender close of probation to the second coming? The Bible says in Isaiah 33 that our bread and water shall be sure. Early writings makes it clear that God will provide, he'll send angels and ravens to feed us. 
So yeah, God feeds us himself. God feeds us. So this is, this is what, what we see. So now my question is, I want to read this quotation and ask you, how do we understand this? Because this is a quotation I've heard someone say, why we're in a church and a person said we live at the Sunday law. Listen to what she says, Cant 11, page 32. She says, as the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was the signal for flight to the Judean Christians, so the assumption of power on the part of our nation, America, in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. It will then be time to leave the large cities preparatory of leaving the smaller ones for retired homes in secluded places. Can you see what she's saying? In the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. It will then be time. It will then be time. So what I'm saying, there are some seven day Adventists who look at this quotation and their conclusion of the matter because this is the last quotation in the book country of him. After the whole book talks about it, then they put this last quotation at the end with no explanation. In other words, don't worry about it. Wait till the Sunday law. How do we understand this? When America enforces the papal Sabbath, it will be then time to leave. Yes? I'm looking at the last part, it says among the mountains. Okay. Right? Yes. Now in that time. But now remember she's the context, because now listen to the context. When America enforces the Sunday law, she says it will then be time to leave the large cities. Okay, give more if she wrote this before the blue law, so give more. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Now let's look at the quotation carefully. That is true, that is true. Let's look at the quotation carefully. She says, now look at this. I'm not, look at, look, look at the quotation carefully. She says, as the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies. Let's pause there. Let's pause right there. So what she is saying, the siege of Jerusalem. The siege of Jerusalem. What is she liking, likening the siege of Jerusalem to? She likes it to an event. Sunday law, that's what she's doing. She says, so the assumption of power on the part of our nation in the decree of enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. So what was a warning to the, to the disciples of Jesus back then? That they must, flee out of, they must flee out of Jerusalem when Jerusalem was sieged. So what is she likening the siege of Jerusalem to? Sunday law. Sunday law. So this is what she's doing. The siege of Jerusalem, she is, she is making it synonymous with what? The Sunday law. Now I want to ask you a question. When you read Matthew chapter 24, Jesus, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, it is then time to flee. What was the abomination of desolation? The surrounding of Jerusalem, Luke 21. So when they saw the surrounding of Jerusalem, then was time to flee. But question, how do you flee if you're surrounded? Based on, based on his history, based on history, what happened was when Jerusalem was sieged the first time, God supernaturally caused something to happen in Rome that caused those soldiers to retrieve. When the soldiers retrieved, what happened to the disciples of Jesus? They fled out. But their retrieving was not for long. They came back and they surrounded the city. So before Jerusalem was destroyed, how many sieges did it have? Jerusalem had two sieges. Two. So, if asked to leave the large cities when the Sunday law, how many times are we to see the Sunday law coming to siege us? Twice. When was the first time we were sieged? 1888, it started. But there's going to be a second siege. Where, what, what are they telling us the second siege is going to be? 2025. So friends, what I'm saying, first siege, 1888, just as Jerusalem was sieged first, and then there's going to be a second siege. The second time, they never come back and retrieve. They came back and Jerusalem was destroyed. Jerusalem was destroyed. So this quotation can be easily understood. That you don't wait for the Sunday law. After, look at the date when she wrote it. Here's the date, yeah? 1885. 
1885, before 1888, she wrote that. After 1888, everything was get out of the cities. Get out as fast as possible. That's, that was the counsel given. That was the counsel given. Now, my second question is, hmm, what should people leave America? That's my question. That's the people ask, should we leave America? No. Go somewhere else. No. Why, why, why shouldn't they leave America? Revelation 13, 16 says, it calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. So no matter where you are in the world, even if you try and go to a small island when you think, okay, there's Sunday laws coming there. There's nowhere to hide. Everyone has, let me say this, if you try and hide the test, you know what you're actually preventing? Preventing on getting the seal. Everyone who gets the seal has to first be tested. God's not putting his seal on someone who's not been tested. You must first be tested. But now, practical steps on how to live. Practical steps, I'm asking. Practical steps on how to live. Can you give practical steps? Practical steps. Practical, let me say this. When people, let me tell you something. When people think of country living, which many of us might have even thought of that before. Country living, you go to the country and you sit on a chair all day. <laughs> and, you, and you look at the clouds, you look at the tree and you look at the birds. Then you go and eat and then you come outside and you look at the trees, you look at the birds, and you look at everything. That's country living. Oh, no. I'm telling you, that's country living. Oh, no. That's how people view country living when they're in the cities. I, I, I'm going to the country and it's a relaxed mode. Oh, no. I sit back and relax. Amen. Now I want you to see this here. Yeah. Have you ever read a vision in volume two of the testimonies where inspiration says that she saw the Advent people traveling? She said she saw a large company starting off, but she says as they kept traveling, she says the port became narrower and narrower. She says they started off on wagons and horses. But she says, as they went, they realized they couldn't continue with their wagons. And they jumped on their horses, and they continued with the horses. But as they went, she says, it became so narrow, they had to leave the horses. And then eventually, she says, they were carrying their bags. It became so narrow, they had to leave their stuff. She says, eventually, the pot became so narrow, and so she says, they had to take off their shoes and their stockings. But she says, at every point, some believers were left behind. They didn't want to leave their wagons, their goods were on there. Some didn't want to leave their horses as they were, and as they kept going, she says, at each advancing point, some people were left behind. Mm. And then she says, eventually when they got back to the end of the pot, there was a rope that was hanging down, and when they looked, there was only a small company of them mm. left, only a small company. Now listen to what's the conclusion of the matter, what she says about those who are left behind. Listen to what she says. She says, we then thought of those who had not accustomed themselves to privations and hardships. Where was such now? They were not in the company. At every change, some were left behind, and those only remained who had accustomed themselves to endure hardships. The privations of the way only made those more eager to press on to the end. Let me ask you this. Where, which people, she says, did not make it to the end? People did not accustom themselves, accustom themselves to what? Privations, privations and all. Do, what, what does privation mean? Yeah. If somebody is going through privation. Yeah. They, they, uh, they, they, yes, privation is when you don't have enough of what you want. That's privation. She says those who had not accustomed themselves to endure hardship, privation, she says were not at the end of the journey. They were not there. there were, none of them were there to be found. Privation. Remember what inspiration says? A faith that can endure delay, weariness, and hunger. How many of us will denounce God if we go hungry? Let me tell you something, friends. Have you ever read Revelation? Speaking about the 144,000, do you know what Revelation says? And Ellen White comments on Revelation 7. Do you know what, what Revelation 7 says? They shall, speaking about the 144,000 who go through the time of trouble, it says they shall hunger no more. 
Do you know what that implies? If it says they shall hunger no more, inspiration says during a time of trouble they hungered. They were going hungry. Friends, those who are not accustomed themselves to endure hardship and privation shall not make it to the end. Shall not make it. Look at country living. Look at, look at what God is trying to do in country living. Look at this. And some people become, imagine you're going through the time of trouble. I'm just saying, imagine you have not accustomed yourself and God says, you know what? I'm putting my seal on you. Go through the time of, and you have not accustomed yourself. And there day goes, and the raven only comes with a little food for you for that day. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I just, the whole day, you're waiting for the raven again. And you see him flying past with food to other people. You see another raven flying. There's another group of, and only one raven came to you for the day. Some of us would get so infuriated with God. When you see raven after raven flying to others, let me say this, if you have not accustomed yourself, jealousy will come up in your heart. God loves them more than he loves me. How come everything is so nice for him? Or how everything is nice for her? Look at them. Jealousy springs up. Then you denounce God. Whole plan of salvation failed. Everyone lost because of you. That's why God is, that's why we're going to go through a test to see who truly is. There's going to be a sifting. There's going to be a sifting, friends. There's going to be a sifting. If these things of selfishness and self has not been uprooted, don't think you're going through the crisis. Because I'm telling you, some of the 144,000 ravens are going to fly past them. The Bible says in Revelation, let me, someone says I'm making this up. The Bible don't say they're going to hunger no more. Revelation 7. Revelation chapter 7, verse 16. We, we started a series, we, we started a, a, a study, we, we studied 144,000 in our prophecy updates. We're going to speak more on this, but I'm just mentioning it now. It says here in verse 16, speaking about the 144,000, it says, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Let me ask you something. If it says they shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst, what does that imply during the plagues of falling? They were thirsty and hungry. You know when you want water so much, but there's no water around to drink. Thirsty, your throat's dry. And that's why it says, the sun shall light or will heat upon them no more. Why? During the plagues, one of the plagues is the sun is scorching hot. Scorching hot. Imagine that you dare. Some friends, would we still have confidence in God? Would you have confidence in God? When no food is coming to you, you talking, you saying, Lord, I'm standing for you. They're hunting my life. I gave up everything for you, Lord. They're seeking to kill me. Lord, and you're making me hunger and thirst. If you're if you openly saying that, Satan triumphs. Even if you're thinking that Satan triumphs, plan of redemption jeopardized. Those who have not learned to endure hardship and privation are not on the end of the journey. Not there. So friends, when you're going through hardship and privation, don't murmur and complain. God, friends, when I'm going through trials, I, I don't murmur and complain. Lord, thank you. But let me tell you, when the cup becomes too bitter, t- Lord, the fire is too hot. The cup is too bitter. Can you sweeten it for me? And you'd sweeten it. Lord, the trial is burning. Consume. Lord, can you please? Qu- quiet. Can you just? Ch- I'm not saying take me out of the flame. I'm just saying put, put the heat down a little. You know what God will do? He'll hear that prayer. But don't murmur and complain. If you do, guess what? Another draft. He's going to give you another draft. And if you murmur and complain, he gives you another draft. And then if you still murmur and complain, oh, you're still not learning, give him another draft. And what are the, I saw that God gave his people a bitter cup to drink. A, and she says they can make it still more bitter by murmuring, complaining, and ripening. You can make it more bitter. You keep complaining, Lord, why this? Why that? I should have. I do. You keep com- God says, give him more. Give her more. They have not learned. But if you say, Lord, this cup is bitter, but inspiration says, I saw they could make it sweet. How? By patience. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be patient. By patience. What else? Endurance. I'm going to endure this, Lord. I will endure it patiently. 
and I'm going to pray over the matter. She says, through prayer, endurance, and, and, and patience, that bitter cup can be made sweet. Add some honey to it. Patience, endurance, and prayer. Add honey to it. So now, come back. Who's not going to make it to the end? Who's not going to be a part of the small people? I'm saying based on the quotation. Those who have not endured two things. What are the two things there? She says hardship. And what else? Privation. Privation. These are the two things. We must learn to endure privation and hardship. Now, I know when we were staying by Makrani in Heim Street, one tea bag you would use about six times. <laughs> I'm saying, hey, you weren't even born there. You weren't born. Yeah. Let me say this. You, are, you know those days, didn't right? <laughs> you dare throw that tea. That time you didn't know nothing. You dare use that tea bag. You dare throw that tea bag off to use it in the burn. You in big trouble. I remember those days. You dare do that. You want to make tea? Take that old tea bag that was used three, four, five times. Those days are hard days. <laughs> I'm telling you, those hard days. <laughs> hey, friends, that bread expires. You eat that expired bread. You're not throwing that bread away. Hardship and privation. Hardship and privation. Let me, let me go further. Cousins have turned to pot in the same water. <laughs> That's how bad things were. After you bought, who's next? You, you don't even try and put, take that water out. You bought in that same water. Next person comes after you, must bought in that same, am I lying? You, you know, that, that's how we loved. We were in, that was privation. Now, if I knew back then, I would protest. I can't bought in dirt. <laughs> I would protest. That pot was dirty. I was forced. You jump in that pot. But it's dirty. No, no. You jump in it. <laughs> Friends, I'm telling you privation. Some of us don't know about privation. I'm telling you, those were hard days. Very hard days. Now, come back here. She says, hard work. Now, country living, page 19. Listen to what's the purpose of country living. It says, if the poor, now crowded into the cities, could find homes upon the land, that or they might not only earn a, a, a livelihood, but find health and happiness now unknown to them. Now listen, what is she talking about? Where they must live? They must leave the cities and go where? To the country. Then she says, well, look at what, this is from the book Country Living. Why does God want us to go to the country? She says, hard work. Now, now let, me, let me see when people think of country living, associated with country living, they don't want to associate hard work. Yes. God said to Adam and Eve, in once they, they sinned, he in, in knew in order to preserve them now, he said to Adam, by the sweat of your brow you shall eat. Yeah. In order to preserve Adam, he said, now this is the, the only way I can assist you, Adam, in overcoming its hard manual work. So, number one is, she says, when she talks about country living, number one, she mentions hard work. Yes. Yes, that's true. Let me, yes, that's another thing. Why, some people come to country living, but when they realize, man, there's so much hard work to do, this is not for me. I'm out. Hard work. So hard work, number one. So let me, when people are looking, we're talking about country living, let's put a list of the things what God says you must expect for the country. Number one, hard work. Hard work. What's number two? Simple what? Simple what? Now help me, what's simple fare? Simple eating. Mm. That's simple fare. Simple eating. Number three? Close economy. Now tell me, what, what question? Who's trying to teach me? Why, why, why country living? What is God trying to teach me? Well, first thing, what is God trying to teach me why I must go to the country? I'm not, I never make this. This is from the book Country Living. What's the first thing God wants me to be engaged in Country Living? Hard work. For, uh, yes, he wants me to have happiness. That's true. Th this is what he wants, health and happiness from me. But you know when you read the book uh, Education, you'll see there's a chapter called uh, Manual Training. That chapter shows that hard work is indispensable to victory over sin. 
she shows, if anyone reads that chapter, she makes it clear there's no way. That's why even when we have school of the prophets, everyone has to go and work in the garden. It's not always in the class, in the class, in the class. We say, we have, there's days where we say no class today. We're going to the garden. Why? Because in the book, Education, she says that conscious be had knowledge. Mm -hmm. She says there must be physical labor. She says God has made that essential to gaining victory over sin. Mm -hmm. She does something to the mind. Even people who struggle, who have issues with um, uh, bipolar, schizophrenic, schizo, what's that thing called? Yes. See, when they're constantly working, it almost it, it helps the mind. It brings the mind to reality. If they're constantly working, but if they're constantly sitting, the mind will damage them. But let them work, and God can actually subside that issue. But I want us to see our health and happiness in order country living. God takes us to the country for our health and happiness. What God brings us to the country for is hard work. Mm -hmm. He's preparing us for eternity, but in order to prepare us, he needs to make sure we have hard work. Mm -hmm. Simple thing, another thing he wants is simple eating, mm -hmm. health-wise. Then what's the next thing? Now help me, some people might not know what's close economy. Close economy. If somebody, let me say, close economy, you always calculate him. Yeah. Budgeting, you calculate him. Um, close economy is when you're constantly calculating, okay, should I buy this? I might not have money for that. So let me just save a little so that next week I can buy that. That's close economy, meaning that you are constantly, you're not just spending foolishly. That's close economy. So when people go to the country, these are some of the lessons God's trying to teach. Hard, hard work, simple eating, close economy. What else? When you go into the country, you must expect often hardship and privation would be there a lot. So when we go to the country, what is God also trying to bring there? Hardship and what else? Friends, I want you to understand hardship and what? Hardship and privation. Now friends, let me say this. You might not have known that God was actually doing us a favor. You might not know this. But when we first came to this property, guess what started, what happened? To, what happened? That we had no water. We were struggled over the issue of water. But this property don't have water coming from the government. It has a bowl. And when we came to that bowl, we tried changing pumps. We done everything. We got people to come and check. It worked for a couple of, we had water, no water. Water, no water. What was that? Privation. When we had the School of the Prophets in 2022, asked the students, when they came here, God allowed the pump to get stolen. You know what happened when they, they just put their foot on the property, they put their foot and there's no water. They couldn't shower, they traveled all over coming. They had no shower for the first week. Using the toilet, they struggled. What was God doing? Privation and hardship. Privation and hardship country living. But then she continues, but a blessing would be theirs in leaving the city. What its enticements to evil, its turmoil, its crime, its misery and foulness for the country's quiet and peace and purity. Friends, now, so when someone thinks country living, you know what they don't think? Hardship. You know when they think country living, they don't think close economy. Why in the city everything's accessible? Everything's accessible, you need this, you get that. Hardship and privation, no one thinks of country living with hardship and privation. But this is, this people, we're trying to cause people not to get disappointed. Because they get go there and they don't expect hard work. They don't expect close economy. They don't expect privation. They don't expect these things. Simple fearing, they don't expect, and when they see it's not what they expected, then they say the city becomes enticing. Why? They had a perverted view of country living. Mm -hmm. See, country living is to prepare us for eternity. That's the only reason. That's the only reason we are preparing for eternity. To prepare our characters. That's the, let me say this, out of all things, that's the main purpose of country living, is to prepare our characters. Mm -hmm. Even if there's no Sunday, look, God will tell us, get out the cities. Yes. Why you want to prepare us for heaven? Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, Sunday law is coming. Now, Move on to my next point. I don't want to spend too much time. I don't want to spend too much time. 
Now, my next point is this. If somebody is single with children, maybe I should leave that question for the last. What do you all say? Someone single, and that's or just by an individual. Maybe it's just a, 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 a person. A single, do they go look for a property for themselves? Now, is it possible, can, um, let me ask this, is it possible, I'm just saying, is this a possibility? Can a person who's by themselves obtain a property? Yes. If they, um, it's possible if they have the wealth. I'm just saying, if they just have, somebody would say they can, but I'm saying in a general order of things, that's not, that's not the case. It's one in a hundred. But I'm saying in the general order of things, what then? Come, come with me to Psalm 68. Let's see what Psalm says. Psalm 68. And then I want practical steps on how to live. Practical steps. So let's just look at this one quickly. Psalm 68. Are we there? Psalm 68 verse 6. Mark these things because somebody will ask you, send your WhatsApp and then don't ask me. You must answer them directly. We've studied this. Go back to your notes. See what your note says. Psalm 68. I want us to see verse 6. It says, God set the solitary in families. What is, if somebody is solitary, what does that mean? Solitary. If a person by, by themselves. So what God can do, God moves upon a family or a ministry to go somewhere, establish a place. Then God can take somebody who is solitary and he can join them to that ministry or to that family. Are you following? That's, that's how God operates. Now, those who have moved to the country, if they're in connection with God, then they'll understand us. Now, some people can be selfish. And yeah, it's just me and what I want to do. Now, while we are on this point, while we are on this point, while we are on this point, What do you think God is actually doing now? Let me, I want to ask you this. What do you think God is doing now when he gives his people big properties? To prepare for the little time of childhood. Others are going to come in. Come in. Everyone who is an SDA, a Seventh day Adventist, and is in the country today, do you know what, what is one of the purposes of them being in the country? If they're truly connected to God, is to prepare their country property for visitors during the National Sunday Law. Not visitors, let me not say visitors. Uh, uh, this is gonna, they're making their, their if, if, if they're truly hearing the voice of God, they will realize that the country property should be, I'm preparing it to be a city of refuge. Yes. That in a little while, God's bringing multitudes here. Yes. If they connect with God, they're gonna understand, I'm preparing this place for the multitudes. I'm just a forerunner. The, the, this is God's place, and all these winners making me prepare it for those who are coming in just now. Now, when a person does do that, then God says, I can bless you. Because now you're realizing that this, 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 this is not about you, it's about my work. Then God can bless, but if you are saying, no, 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 Lord, this is mine, this is mine, and no one I'm sharing this with. Let me tell you, you're preparing yourself. Let me say this, there are people who are gonna be in the country who will receive the mark of the beast. Yes. If selfishness has not been uprooted out of the heart, no, no, Lord, this is mine, I can't share my house with no one. Imagine thousands are coming. Dormitory is packed. That dormitory is, every dormitory is packed. Come by Sharif. Brother Sharif, yeah, we got 15 more. Heard the loud cry. <laughs> the Sharif start banging the door. No, I'm tired of this. <laughs> You're always bringing them to my house. You, let me say this. In a little while, you're going out. Mark of the beast. I'm just using that as an illustration. What I'm saying is, if that's your mindset, this is mine, I'm drawing a line here and no one's coming over my line. Let me say this selfishness. You are preparing for the mark of the beast. That's what you're preparing for. So what I'm saying, we ought to look at what we have as not as mine. But Lord, I'm preparing the way for others. Then God says, now my child, you, now that you understand that, I can open up the windows of heaven and bless you. Because now you understand it's not about you. It's about getting ready, helping other people. So th th this is why some people are going to come out. 
Some seven-day adventures are going to come out at the 11th hour. Present truthers, but they were bound. Then majority, but are going to be people who are, who are Babylon. They will come out at the 11th hour and the loud cry is given. Those from Babylon. Now, practical steps on how a person gets out of the city. Practical steps. Number one is clear, you have to pray. Yeah, there's no doing things without prayer. Prayer is the first step. Now, I want us to see these quotations. I'm going to read on this issue. Listen to what she says here. Country Living, page 24, paragraph 4, paragraph 2, sorry. She says, The time has come when, as God opens the way, families should move out of the cities. Pause there. Pause there. What does she say? When God does what? So when somebody is going to leave the city into the country, what must you be looking for? Looking, look at God opening up the way. Now remember, some, when, when God opens up the way, it might not be what you think opening up the way. For us, how God opened up the way was, which made it a, a necessity now, as when we had to move out of the place we were staying. It was a deadline, you'll have to move out. Deadline. What was that? God opened the way. That was an opening of the way, even though it, was, it seems, how, how does God open the way? That, he was opening the way. He was opening the way. So what I'm saying is when you are, when you are moving, you must make sure you are, looking in for, you are looking at God opening up the way. God opening up the way. Now let me, ask, let me say this as well. Someone says I got no money, or how do I look for God opening up the way? Thank you. Desire of ages 330. Inspiration says our Heavenly Father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. Mm. How many ways does God have to provide for us? Thousand. And she says which we know. So if God can choose out of these thousand ways which way I want to use. Mm. And he says you know nothing and he has a thousand ways to provide for us. Mm. He can pick choose which way he wants to provide. God can provide by giving directly the funds for the property. God can provi provide by giving the property for free. God can provide by taking you to a family that's already there. God got a thousand ways to provide for which we know what? Nothing. But then the quotation goes on in order for you to claim that promise. She says, those who accept the one principle of making the service and honor of God supreme will find perplexities vanish and a plain pot set before their feet. What's the condition in order? She says you must be willing to make God's honor and his service supreme. When you do that, she says, perplexities will vanish and a plain pot will be set before your feet. Plain pot. So when we are talking about country living, we must understand that God owns everything. I have heard testimonies of how people got lands for free. Some testimonies when God gave the money at the 11th hour and there was a deadline. They, stay, they went to the property, they saw the property, they said, we're taking it. Mm. When it was time, they had a deadline to pay the money, had not a cent. God gave the money. Mm. Many, many, many different things. When we were looking for property from the start, we were looking for property with no money. Mm. Let me tell you, sometimes I had just enough money to get there with petrol in my car mm. and to get back home. Mm. Just enough money for petrol. Looking, I remember we went to one place, we were looking for property. And the ox, I don't know if you were there, brother, but I think our brother Kip was there, and we, she asked years ago, she asked, how are you paying? I told her I'm paying cash. I had no cash. <laughs> but by faith, I knew when the time is right, when the property is right, God's going to give the money. We kept looking, we kept looking, we kept, some properties, where they were cheap, but it was not, it's too small. Not for the vision God had given. Some properties we went to was big but too expensive. There was always something wrong, but any which way we had no money to even say we want a property. But eventually when this, God made it, this is the one. This is the one. Now, so what should we be watching for? God doing what? Opening the way. This is, what, this is from the book Country Living. God opening the way again, she says, she says, I'm going to skip all that because of time. She says, red words, God will help his people 
to find such homes outside the cities. Who will help his people find his homes? God is going to help. So we must watch for his opening, realizing that God is going to help me to get a country property. Again, she says, she says, more and more as time advances, our people should leave the cities. For years, we have been instructed that our brethren and sisters, and especially families and with children, should plan to leave the cities. Now watch this. As the way opens before them to do so. So question, how, when, again, what is she repeating? The way must do what? The way must open. So what must you be, if you, are, if you, are, if you, if you want to get out of this, first and foremost, you should be praying. What you're praying, you must be doing what? You must be watching to see the Lord if he's opening up doors. So you're praying, number one, and then practical steps we are talking about here. People always ask practical, we've been practical. You pray, number one. While you are praying, what are you doing? You are, you, what are you looking for? That's true, let's write that. So practical steps. So number one, we're, we're talking about practical steps. Number one is you praying. Number two is you are looking for his, prof, his openings. So praying, looking for openings. Now, let me say something about prayer. Because people always talk about money when they talk about country. But let me say something about prayer. <coughs> prayer and faith will do what no power on earth can accomplish. Prayer and faith will do what? What no power on earth can accomplish. You know, when we are looking for property and we never have funds, God encouraged my heart because you know, you look in, you look in, you become discouraged now. Because you look in and you, even when you see a nice big prop, you don't have the money. So God encouraged my heart. I remember once we went and we looked at the property. And hey, it was, it was a, a right property. Things could have been done there, but it was just, we will get to a, when you're looking for a property. It was all right. And we looked at the property. There was even a river flow into that property. And we, we looked at it. And yeah, we spoke with the lady. She was very friendly. Her husband, uh, children were there, very friendly. And so she asked, like, yeah, we said, no, we'll pay cash. So then she, because she took, she took my number. So then she, she, she contacted, she said, okay, um, how much do you have? Hey, now, what do I say? How much do you have? I said, we were waiting for the Lord to open the way. I just bought, oh, yeah, I'm waiting for the Lord to open the way. That's it, waiting for the Lord to open the way. In those lines. So to indirectly, I said, I, I, the cash is coming from the Lord. Then she sent me a message. She says, you can get this property for free. You know how that just my heart? I said, Lord, what in the world? She, she literally, the woman, she, she said, I want you to get this property for free. She was shifting out of the country. She was taking her dogs, everything. I don't know which kind, I forgot which country they were going to. And she said, you're going to get this property for free. I want you to take it for free. She sent me forms. I don't know if you can remember the time. Everyone's excited. Oh, we're going out. God opened the way. <laughs> she sent the form. She says, you need to fill in this form. You you're getting this property. My hours in, I don't, I was in cloud. I don't know what. So happy. But then we realized, man, this woman was sincere in what she was doing, yeah. but somebody had tricked her. Yes. It was some, whoever had told her, no, this person can get the property. There was some, but we just realized those papers were some trick. That was to trick her and to trick us as well. Neither of us were going to get anything from that property. And then we just realized, mm -mm. and she also realized, and we said, no, we can't go forward. But that was something in which God just done to encourage the heart. So what I'm saying is when we pray and we watch him, God, God, God owns everything. God owns everything. Now, so number one is praying. Number two, look for opening. Now, let's see. Let's see. Now, remember what I said, what the prophet says, pray and faith will do what no power on earth can accomplish. So even if you're looking for property and you're saying, Lord, who are you going to move upon to give me this money? God don't have to move on no one. You might not know no one who has money to buy property. God don't even need that. Prayer and faith will do what no power on earth can accomplish. Do you know God got a thousand ways to provide? Thousand which we know nothing of. So pray, number two, look for his opening. Now listen to what else she says. Many 
will have to labor earnestly to help open the way. Can you hear that? So even though you're waiting to look for, she says for some of us, we're going to have to labor earnestly to help open the way. You know what that means then? It means then you're going to have to go and look at properties. It means that you're going to have to go and travel, you're going to have to speak with people. What, what are you doing? You are seeking to, not my words, prophet says, many will have to labor earnestly to help open the way. But until it is possible, so while you're still waiting, for God to open the way and you're laboring to open the way, but until it is possible for them to leave, so long as they remain, they should be most active in doing missionary work, mm. however limited their fear of influence may be. So can you see again this issue that God has a thousand ways to provide, but if you are not in his service, that, that's not your promise. You can't claim that. Again, she says, while you're waiting for God to give you the country property, engage in service in the city. Mm. Engage in service. No matter how limited your sphere of influence, engage. Engage. So what is the third step? While you are praying, look, you must labor what? Earnestly to do what? To help open the way. That means you're going to have to go and see properties. You're going to have to speak to those who have gone before you. You're going to have to understand more and learn more and seek guidance and direction from others as well. That's help, you are you laboring earnestly to help open the way. So these are some of the practical steps. Um, one of the most practical, you go and look. Go and look as you are praying, go and look. Now, when someone's looking for property, people always get confused when they're looking for property. My question to us now, when people are looking for property, because there's a lot of country properties all over and people are buying country properties, what's the counsel when they are, they do right, God provides and they see a country property and they want it, what is the criteria in order for that to be the country property? Water, okay, ball, you can dig a ball, drill a ball, but I'm, okay, huh? Not too close to the cities or or not too far. Because let's just say you're five hours to the nearest city. What evangelism are you going to be doing? Are you going to evangelize the cows, the sheep? Mm -mm. You have to be, she says, not too far from the cities so that you can be engaged in some sort of evangelism. Because remember, country living, you're not going to hide. You work in the cities from outpost centers. So I want us to, you know what? Before I read these quotations, before I read these quotations, actually, let me read this one, and then I want to show you all pictures. And then from these pictures, you all tell me which do you think is, which do you think is, is, is um, country living. Let's first read this quotation. This is from the book Evangelism. She says, now remember, you know what, this quotation is not so much country, that what I'm, where I'm going. I don't know why I took it out to put it in this, but anyway, it's back, we're still on this point, practical steps. But it's going to help us to identify country land, which is the right one. Now I want you to see this. She says, now remember, we are talking about what steps? Practical steps. So I, I never put it here, but I did mention labor earnestly to help open the way. Now look at what she says. Practical steps. Let men or women of sound judgment be appointed, not to publish a broader intentions, but to search for properties in rural districts in easy access to the cities. Can you see what she says? You practical steps. Look for country property. Don't just sit back, okay, Lord, you're going to open the way. No, no, no. Engage in looking. There were sites, I was, I was looking on sites, and that's where I saw this. I, I was looking on sites, and I saw a property. You have to physically take time to look, search. Why do you pray? This is what the, the prophet is telling us. She says, suitable small training schools for workers where facilities may be provided for treating the sick uh, and weary souls who know not the truth. So, okay, those are going to establish institutions. Then she says, she says, look for just such place, look for such places just out from the large cities where suitable buildings may be erected. Now, let's, let me ask you this. Can you name a large city? Durban, 
Johannesburg. Now, Great Town is not a large city. That's a very small city. It's a town, not even a city, it's a town. Large cities? Durban. So, easy access. Now, how, how far will be easy access? Is Marisburg a, is Marisburg a large city? Yes, yes Marisburg is a large city. I think Marisburg is the capital. It's the capital of KwaZulu Natal. I believe so. No, no, it's not Durban. Durban is, has more people than Marisburg. It's, the, has more, it's, more, it's like a tourist place. But the capital is Maritzburg. What am I saying? Oh, this is the question. So when she says, not far from the large city, so how long will be that? Okay, so convert that into hours. So okay, one hour, 40, one hour 45 minutes, one and a half hours, two hours. So you don't want to be too far from the large city. Not that you want to go back into the city, but to do work there. Now, what did she say? Practical steps. What must you do? In the first sentence, what, what must you do? Not publish a broad day intention, but to search for property. So must they be searching for property? Yes. yes. You can't be saying you want country living, but you're not searching for property. Now, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. She says, look, blue words, look for such places just out from the large city where suitable buildings may be secured. Watch this. Either as a gift from the owners or purchased at a reasonable price. Mm. Can you see now? Now, the first time, the first one was almost a gift from the owner. Yeah. Almost a gift. God, then God said, no, I've got another plan. That's not the property. Because that property, we'll see, it wasn't really what God wanted. But... But then, oh, then she says, at a what price? A reasonable price. Friends, I'm telling you, the properties we have seen for 20 hectares in the millions, and there's nothing on the property. Absolutely nothing. When we saw this property, there were stints on it, and it was much cheaper than just property worth nothing. So I knew this, this has to be it. Why? Compared to all the properties, this was compared, it was like nothingness. With what it was offering compared to those other properties. And I knew, prophet says, either as a gift from the owner or at a reasonable price. Reasonable price. So can't, let me ask you this, is it too hard for God to make someone give property as a gift? I'm telling you, there's many ministries today. How did they get their property? You'll find it was a gift from the owner. Ministries all over the world. How you got that property? God moved on the owner to give us that property. All they done was they wrote a letter telling them what, what they're planning on doing there. Owner said, no, take the property. God moved on the heart. So what I'm telling you, I know this. God has done that. Now, I want us to see. What is this here? I'm asking, what is this? This is country. I'm showing you. An, so look at that. Take a mental picture. You got a mental picture? Look at that. Take a, you got that mental picture? I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not going to help you with clues. You have got these two pictures, right? Another picture. So you've got three pictures. Now, I want to ask country living for the crisis. Yes. Okay, I'm married. Yes, I'm married. No. So who says no? Tell one you speak. You got the mic. Tell me why no. And then who says yes? You take the mic and speak. Why? So let him, let dad speak first. And let's see why he says yes. And then you speak directly afterwards. Firstly, they have water. There's enough land for farming, and there's no homes nearby. Okay, <laughs> all right. Maybe you never, you not. Maybe you need your glasses there. <laughs> you need. All right, Delon, your turn. Why you say no? Why you say no? The neighbors are too close. Can you see that there? Can you see somebody staying here? There's their neighbor here. There's their neighbor here. Can you see it's a bit too close? Even though they have, they can farm. They can have water. They can have, but their neighbors is too close. 
Now look at this quotation. She says, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm reading the second portion of the quotation. She says, we should now begin to hear the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the city into rural districts. Now watch it. Where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. So can you see that when you're looking for property, you, even though it's in the country, I, some people obviously, they might be in the country, but that's not where God wants them. Why do you, when you walk out the house, your neighbor country, prop, your neighbor's right next to you. Your neighbor can see everything you're doing. He can see your, like whatever you're doing in your yard, your neighbor's, like the, the neighbor can look through the window and see you. <laughs> that's not country, because when the Sunday law comes, you, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. So first, first picture, Zank, can't be it. And next two people can answer this one. Next two people can answer this one. Next two people. I want a yes and a no. Who says yes? Who says no? Who says this is not country living? Who says yes, it is country living? Yes. Not you, Delon. Somebody else. Let other people now. Who says yes? Tell us what you have to say. Okay. What? Yes or no? Yes. Sharif says yes. Give Sharif the mic. Who says no? Okay, so give the no first. Give the no first. Always no first. Give the no first. No first. For me, no, because I see there's lots of houses. But let me help. This is one house. This is not many houses. It's one. No, yeah. We're close. We're close. There's no water. I'm, I'm, I'm also seeing there should be like a river or borehole. But I'm seeing there's other, there's, there's, there's neighbors, there's dwellings around there. All even around there. No. Okay, no. give that a Sharif. All right, I hear you, brother. Um, yes, because there's trees. And the house, that house is far, it's from that end, it's far away from each other. And there's, there's like a garden part, this part there. Okay. So there should be like water there. Okay, the amen. So let me say with this one, with this one, to me, it, it, can't fit the, it, it can't fit the description. It can't fit, you know, there's trees all over there. You can see the trees, yeah? There's all the trees. <laughs> but it, it can fit the description. It can. But this is not for an institution. This is for a small family, not for an institution. If you are planning to establish an institution, this you cannot purchase. This, was, this is impossible to buy this property, but I'm saying the houses are not cl closely crowded together. They are not closely crowded together. This one. Yes, yes, yes. That's for ministry. Now this is, let me say, this is more for ministry. When, when it's not one family, it's a few. Then, yeah, there's no neighbors. No neighbors. So this, I'm going to say more for ministry. This, I'm saying, is a pause. It's not perfectly ideal, but it is a pause because your neighbors are not, they can't see through the window what you're doing. Yeah. Even if the neighbors look through their windows, they can't see what's happening in the yard there at that country property. So what I'm gonna say, this, 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 this is almost in the midst of, a, in the, midst of the woods. No proper, no, you, your neighbor can't see and you got no neighbor here, no neighbor. Now I want you to see this here. Listen to what the prophet says. Remember, the main purpose of country living, we are not saying someone must go and find an isolated mountain where no one lives on this mountain and build a house and a property there five hours away from people. That's not God's plan. Look at this quotation. She says, after a time, Sunday law labor question came up for consideration. It seems as if the line soon were to be drawn tightly about us that we should not be able to work on Sunday. Now listen. Our school was situated, institution was situated in the heart of the woods, far from any village or railway station. Can you see when they, when they were purchasing for an institution where they bought their property? In, she says, in the, you know what in the heart of the woods means? It was in the middle of the woods. What she says was nothing near, there was no railway station and there was no village. No one was living near enough to be disturbed in any way by anything we might do. Mm. So question, can you see that? 
when specifically an institution is going to be established, especially like a school and so forth, what does she say? There must be no neighbors around. No neighbors around. But she says, even though they were in the hearts of the woods, she says, nevertheless, we were watched. Even though they were in the hearts of the woods. But do you know what? The officers never disturbed them. Why? She says, because of the medical missionary work. We had done a work, a wonderful work in, this, in helping their families that they didn't want to interfere with our work on Sunday. They left us. Now, the, the, I want to conclude here. Let's conclude. Let's conclude here. Let's conclude on this quotation. Country living, page 28. Now listen to what she says. When somebody is seeking country living, I should have started with this. But listen to what she says. The wisdom of any human agent is not sufficient for the planning and devising at this time. Spread every plan before God with fasting and with the humbling of the soul before the Lord Jesus and commit thy ways unto the Lord. So when somebody, now this is from the book Country Living, page 28. When you're looking for country living, if you can't deny yourself for food, no Lord answer me, but you don't want to fast and pray. How do you expect God to hear you? You know what we've done? I'm just saying the last phase we're having all night, every month, all night praying. Oh, the last phase of it, I remember I told my mother, brother, and sister, we, we pray now, having a, because there was deadline, you must be. We took country living, the book, and we had a half night prayer meeting. I think we, we prayed, and what the, our, throughout that prayer was session was one thing. We want to get out of the city to the country. Mm-hmm. I remember that time clearly because that, that, that Lord, this is our, our last push, please, Lord. Time is up now. And then, poof, this country property appeared. Mm-hmm. But it required prayer. Mm-hmm. Humbling of ourselves before God. Inspiration says, if we're going to get out, we must spend time in fasting and prayer. Then she says, the sure promise is he will direct the part. He is what? The next word? He is infinite in resources. What does it mean he's infinite in resources? Does God have a... Pr- Let me ask you this. Do you think Bill Gates is richer than God? Does Bill Gates have more money than God? Does Jeff Bezos have more money? Or Elon Musk says, God, has, God can overnight give, if he wants to, overnight empty their accounts and put all that money in your account. God can do that if he, he's not going to do that, but he can, he will empty their accounts if he wants so. He can make them broke overnight. They can wake up from being a billionaire to having nothing. He can do that. But I, I've heard stories of how people found money in their accounts. Literally, I heard a story of a man saying he had emptied his account, helping someone else, and he knew there was no money there. But he had an impression, just check, because you know you can check on your phone. These days you can check on your phone. And he checked, impression was check on his phone. And when he checked, what he checked, the man thought there was a big mistake. He phoned the bank to ask them, I think I made a mistake. The amount of money he saw in his account, he thought there was a mistake. Someone sent that money to his account. What I'm saying is sometimes we limit God. We're always complaining. Why does? Instead of, Lord, thank you. When the time is right, you will provide. But we're always murmuring and complaining. And God says, okay, you're murmuring. I'll give you more trials. I'll make more privations come to you. When you learn the lesson, then when I see you, can, you, you, you patiently bear in this trial, then I'll answer you now. But keep murmuring, you'll keep drinking. Bitter cups. So she says, he has infinite in what? Resources. Friends, I'm concluding here. Another thing, she talks about we should not colonize, meaning there shouldn't be, you buy a two acre, a small property and there's many families. That's God don't want that. God don't want that. Because she says people start dying spiritually. And that's not his plan. That's not his plan. So I think we've answered all the questions. Every question. Is there any question that we did not answer and you want to ask? I'm going to pray now. I'm going to pray and close. If there's no question, we're going to pray and close. So we all understood. This year was, this year was answering questions and practical steps on how to live. Previous studies, we showed the urgency, the necessity of country living. Now we are just showing practical steps on how. 
And answering those questions which are difficult, I conclude here, Daniel 11, Maranatha 174, the prophet says, the wars and rumors of wars, the world is stirred with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. Soon strife amongst the nations will break out with the intensity that we do not anticipate. Remember I shared with you that, that Ukraine has now invaded Russia and they took a portion called Kursk. There's a portion called Kursk that they've invaded, they've, they've took, but it's a very small, I'm saying when you com compare to what Russia has taken and what Ukraine has taken, there's no comparison. There's no, but I want you to see this, but it has agitated Russians because many civilians have been killed in the process of them taking Kursk. Many have died. Now it says here, yeah, who was behind the uh, Ukraine taking Kursk, a portion, not the whole thing, but they took a portion, who was behind it, I want us to see. It says the CIA admits to conversations over Ukraine's incursion into the Kursk region. Now, how did even Ukraine have so much soldiers to do this? As I said, it was the soldiers of NATO. But they are not going there wearing NATO uniform. They are going there wearing Ukrainian uniform as mercenaries. That's how they're going there. Now, I want us to see, it says here, Russia and China on the right part in standing up to the US. I never have time to show you, but your president today as I'm speaking is in China. Your president is in China. As I'm speaking, him and Xi, uh, what's his name, Xi Jinping. Him and Xi Jinping had a secret meeting because it's a meeting. See, Xi Jinping is, is wooing Africa. He's wooing the whole continent of Africa. Russia too is wooing Africa. So your president went there before the whole African, all the presidents, he went there before because Xi Jinping wanted a secret, a, a private meeting with him first. And, and Xi Jinping has promised 51 billion, 51 billion he has promised to your president. Mm -hmm. And other, your president is taking a portion of that 51 billion dollars. Your president is taking a portion. And he has promised South African, more, Xi Jinping has promised South Africans more jobs. Mm -hmm. Xi Jinping. <laughs> Friends, you know what that means? Trouble. Because you know what America has seen now with, with South Africa and Africa, they see them as enemies. You know there's the many sanctions on Zimbabwe, you know that. Do you know that Zimbabwe is sanctioned? It's one of the most sanctioned countries in Africa, Zimbabwe. Do you know which country has sanctioned uh, Zimbabwe? Do you know, Felix? You don't know which country has sanctioned your country? America. That's why America has sanctions. It's the most sanctioned country in Africa by America. That Zimbabwe is America's example. Any African country goes against our wishes and our will, we sanction you until we bring you to your knees. Do you know that before? You, you should know that in Zimbabwe. I, it was once on the news that in order to buy bread, people had to push a wheelbarrow full of money. You, you, you don't know if you know that. In Zimbabwe, in 2000, yes, I, I, saw, we, I saw that on the, people in order to just buy maybe a bread and sugar, they had to come to the shop with a wheelbarrow full of money. People were carrying bags. Stop the man, why that bag? Open up the bag, it's full of money. But that, that, all that money combined, I, I felt, feel sorry for the man behind the counter. <laughs> there was a non-stop counting for one item. He had to count trillions of Zimbabwe dollars for one item. Next person, <laughs> it was back then, people, people were leaving money on the floor. That's how money was becoming so, it was so worthless. People were leaving money to flow on, flow on the floor. They were like, man, I'm not going to do this. Carry all this around. But let me say what it done to the country. It really helped people to plant, uh, plant food. That's what it done. It, it forced people now, no more to look at the cities for food. They start planting now. And in a sense, it has helped. Now, I showed you who Putin's back in now. Let's come here. Friends, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money, that was the love of money that led to this war in Ukraine. It says here, September the 3rd, 2024, Rothschilds helped Ukraine clinch deep um, restructuring. So let me say this. You know that after a war, a nation must be rebuilt. 
After every war, nation has to be rebuilt. Do you know who are the powers that are going to re- who's going to pro- Now, when you rebuild, that nation is in debt to the one who's doing the rebuilding. Because it's, it's, they come with the workers, it's their material, they are making money off that. Which people are going to benefit? It says, yeah, let's blow it up. It says that Ukraine reached its recent agreements with bondholders on a debt restructuring as a result of efforts by which, which, which uh, family? The Rothschilds is one of the richest families in the world. The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. But I want us to see another group of people who's involved with this. It says there in the bottom next sentence, Kiev announced last week that it had reached an agreement with a group of foreign investors to restructure its 20 billion debt, bondholders including U.S. financial giants, BlackRock, BlackRock. Who's gonna come and help rebuild up Ukraine? BlackRock. So who do you think wanted that war? BlackRock. We've proved that before. BlackRock's behind much of what's taking place. Or if uh, Kennedy, listen to what he has to say. This is a war that should have never happened. It's a war that Russians tried repeatedly to settle on terms that were very, very beneficial to Ukraine and us. The major thing they wanted was for us to keep NATO out of the Ukraine. Now, you know that Putin didn't want to fight with Ukraine. From the beginning, Putin said, all I would want is Ukraine, don't join NATO. And I'm happy with Ukraine. Let, let Ukraine be a buffer between me and NATO. I'm happy. But when America put pressure on Zelensky, UK put pressure, no, apply for to join NATO, even though they knew NATO would not accept them, would not accept Ukraine. But Putin don't even want to take their chance. The big military contractors want to add new countries to NATO all the time. Why? Because then that country has to conform its military purchases to NATO weapon specifications. Let me, let me help us too. Do you know why America wanted war and why other nations want war, especially America? You know why? When you buy any product, there's an expiry date. Do you know that bullets, guns, tanks, there's an expiry date? So what they do is, so that their things don't go to waste, especially America, they agitate wars amongst other nations. And what they do is, so that, and they benefit of the war, they actually tell that nation that we will give you almost like a loan. But in this loan will be not so much money, the loan will be our weapons. So instead of their weapons expiring now, they give it off to another nation and they benefit. That's the duty and the work of the CIA, is to cause wars amongst nations so that the war is not directed to America. Keep every nation fighting with them. That's the CIA's duty. They look for outside threats, they identify you as a threat, they make war in your nation. So that you don't come near America, that's their goal. Which means certain companies, Northrop North Grumman, Raytheon, General Dynamics, Boeing, and Lockheed, get a trapped market. In March of 2022, we committed $113 billion. Just to give you an example, we could have built a home for almost every homeless person in this country. We then committed another 24 billion since then, two months ago, and now President Biden is asking for another 60 billion. But the big, big expenses are gonna come after the war, when we have to rebuild you all the things that we destroyed. Mitch McConnell was asked, can we really afford to spend 113 billion to Ukraine? He said, don't worry. It's not really going to Ukraine. It is it's going, going to, to American defense manufacturers. So he just admitted it's a money laundering scheme. And who do you think owns every one of those companies? BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock. So Tim Scott, during the Republican debate, said, don't worry. It's not a gift to Ukraine. It's a loan. So raise your hand if you think that that loan's ever getting paid back. Yeah, of course it's not. So why do they call it a loan? Because if they call it a loan, they can impose loan conditions. And what are the loan conditions that we impose on? Number one, an extreme austerity program. So that if you're poor in Ukraine, you're going to be poor forever. 
Number two, most important, Ukraine has to put all of its government-owned assets up for sale to multinational corporations, including all of its agricultural land, the biggest single asset in Europe, in Ukraine. There's been a thousand years of war fought over that land. It's the richest farmland in the world. It's the breadbasket of Europe. 500,000 kids almost. Ukrainians have died to keep that land as part of Ukraine. They almost certainly didn't know about this loan condition. They've already sold 30% of it. The buyers were DuPont, Cargill, and Monsanto. Who do you think owns all of those companies? BlackRock. Yeah, BlackRock. And then in December, President Biden gave out the contract to rebuild Ukraine. And who do you think got that contract? BlackRock. So they're doing this right in front of us. They don't even care that we know anymore because they know that they can get away with it. And how do they know that? Because they have a strategy. And that strategy is an old, old strategy, which is they keep us at war with each other. They keep us hating on each other. They keep the Republican... You can see that, friends. This was all a money-making thing. Putin didn't want, it from the beginning, he didn't want the war. But Ukraine is no more, it does not belong to Ukrainians anymore. Ukraine now belongs to America. BlackRock. That's what it belongs to. So it, it, outwardly the world says, oh, America is defending Ukraine. Uh, uh, America has invaded Ukraine in a different way than Russia. And now they own Ukraine. Friends, may God help us. Time is almost finished. Those who are inside the city, God says, get out. And those who are inside the country, God says, what is he trying to develop so that we can be prepared for heaven, hard work, simple faring, close economy, hardships and privation. This is our lot for heaven. Those who are not accustomed to hardship and privation, prophet says, I lost sight of them. They do not make it to the end. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the lessons you have taught us um, today. Thank you so much, Lord, for once again the call to leave the cities and revealing to us from inspiration the practical steps on how we ought to live. Please, Lord, I really plead and ask that you would help your children that are seeking to leave who are still stuck within the cities I also pray for those individuals who are bound to a husband or wife who do not want to embrace this message. And we know it's very much possible, as First Peter tells us in chapter 3, that through the holy, the holy living of the one spouse, the other one can be converted. So Father, I just pray that you'll intervene according to each situation, that you'd please give the grace, give the means, give the wisdom, Lord, on how to make the exodus in each specific um, situation. Please help us, Father, to prepare to meet Jesus and help us ever to remember that the main purpose of country living is that we might develop a character fit for heaven. Forgive us, Lord, where we have not embraced these things which you have designed we should embrace in country living, hard work, simple fare, hardships, privation, and close economy. Help us, Lord, to be more faithful and see these things rather as a blessing than a curse. Please, Father, bless us, continue to abide with us, and help us, Lord, to get all things ready, for time is almost finished. Help us to gain victory over sin. For I pray this humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious.